Self-driving cars are just around the corner. We hear it almost every day as car companies and tech firms race to revolutionise the world of personal transportation. Do you know what though? Autonomous cars are also right under your nose in highly advanced models like the Mercedes-Benz S-Class that are being held back to meet laws that are still coming into shape. Keen to explore what the future of autonomous vehicles will look like, Mercedes has sent its most advanced car on a round-the-world tour, released artificial shackles from it and sent it out into the world with a team of expert engineers to see just what the future of self-driving cars will look like. Mercedes Intelligent World Drive has two objectives. One is to gather data from five continents, saving terabytes upon terabytes of information that will be used to improve future models. The second is to improve public understanding by allowing outsiders like me to have a closer look at their activities. So, welcome to the future. Here we are driving down the Hume Highway. It is normally a huge slog driving from Sydney to Melbourne hour after hour with nothing to see, very little to do, just a real chore at 110 k's on the road. But today we're doing things a bit differently. I'm in the right hand seat, usually the driver's seat in Australia, but we're in a left hand drive right as well. prototype car. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter who's driving because this is a car that can drive itself. It's a prototype Mercedes-Benz S-Class with some special modifications that allow it to travel along the road pretty well without driver intervention. Behind the wheel is Jochen Harb from Mercedes-Benz Research and Development, and we can shake his hand because hey. he doesn't need to How drive today. Hello. Welcome um, to my side. Yeah, the car is pretty much in control. So, Jochen, tell me, tell me about the car that we're driving here. Okay, we're driving a, a standard production S-Class model year 2017. Um, that will be introduced in Australia shortly. Uh, the, but we use it as a research car or as a testing car uh, for future automation vehicles. Uh, so what we did is we turned off in this car the hands-off detection that is time-triggered in a real car to remind you frequently that you're still in charge, that, that it's only a partially automated car. I have to do that manually, that's why only trained drivers are allowed to drive it. But it feels in normal driving as if it was a level 3 car. Yeah, so in this car you have to be able to take over driving in a moment's notice. Exactly. That's why I'm not sitting here like this. That's why I have my hands somewhat near the steering wheel. So this car has some technology in it that we haven't really seen in Australia and that the, the cruise control system will adapt to speed zones yep. all by itself. Yep. So currently we're set for 110, but as we get closer to Melbourne and you yep. reach a 70 zone or something like that, uh, as soon as the car sees a sign yep. ahead, it will recognize that, show it on the dashboard, but then it then reduces its speed. Yep. To it seven. even has a preview function, so it will start to reduce before that sign. Right. With the goal of having that speed just about at that sign. Yeah. Okay. So the next the next step is to go to South Africa and yep. to have another look at another right-hand drive market and look at some of the differences yep. between them. So um, what do you expect to see differently around Cape Town compared to Melbourne? Again, uh, looking at a freeway basis, probably we see the pedestrian issue. That's one of the most prominent things probably in South Africa, uh, seeing things on a freeway that shouldn't be there. Yeah. So here we are in South Africa on the other side of the world to see how this technology handles a completely different driving environment. So Jochen, this car now has been to Germany, it's been to China, Australia, and now it's in South Africa, another right-hand drive market, but somewhere that's very different to Australian roads. What sort of uh, differences have you experienced in trying to teach this car how to behave? Well, we have very different road markings here in, in South Africa, some very specific ones. We have zigzag lines, we have red lines, we have uh, mixed lines that are double solid and then uh, broken in the middle. So very different environment, a lot of people on roads, all types of roads. Um, and of course, we just had sand of, uh, being blown across the road. So we had no road markings and no distinct um, edges or anything at all. So uh, very challenging for the car, as a matter of fact. With the big differences that you have in between these countries, does that mean markets like this, like South Africa, will be slower to receive this sort of technology than, say, Germany? We will probably have a rollout depending on the market and the challenges we have. Also, of course, depending on the market demand. Um, and of course, uh, it also depends on the type of road that you're doing. Uh, roads that you have a very good overview, you might open, but yes, there will be a rollout. And where does Australia sit in there? Because Australia is a very important market for Mercedes, isn't it? It is, it is. And we have, uh, as I said, in Australia, we are very, we, we encounter very innovation friendly uh, customers and uh, environments. Uh, 
of the population is very open to, to technology and we have very good uh, road marking signage uh, so I see Australia um, at an early stage uh, much earlier than here for that sort of experience how, how far off is it to have a car that's completely autonomous in the heart of Melbourne or Sydney or New York or a city like that we typically expect fully autonomous car driverless cars to be a, a shared business so uh, let's say a robotic taxi or something like that mm -hmm. um, so that will probably also start the rollout within the next decade um, and then we'll see uh, what cities what mega cities what interesting cities we have so right now we're driving this car on a on a country road and you know it's pretty much steering by itself and braking and accelerating which is it's magic stuff really to experience this is is it a legislative barrier or is it a technical barrier holding things back at the moment it's yeah? both it's pushing technology and of course what we desperately need is uh, the ability to test as freely as possible mm -hmm. and of course we do need legislations to have clear rules and in some countries it's legislation in some countries it's it's technology you can't really generalize generalize that mm. this is a story that is just getting started We'll have plenty more from the world of autonomous cars in the weeks, months and years to come. Keep an eye on Drive for all the latest in automotive tech.